There we go. There we go. Welcome to another episode, guys. Um, Wasabi. Who's next? And I'm Smee. Yeah, introduce yourself, you guys. Sorry, I was hitting the bong, so I couldn't talk. I'm Kyle. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> we have such a rowdy group of people. We have the future doctor, the fucking get stoned and move people shit, and then me, the quasi-pseudoscientist. All right, let's do this. All right, we're going to have a pretty fun-filled talk today, and... You know, we're going to, a little unique episode today, you're going to hit a bunch of different points, and first things first, we should probably talk about, this happened today, right? Um, oh, no, um, alright, so it happened the- last night. Last night, okay. Yeah, but it, last but obviously, because it happened last night, it was making all of the news cycle today, and everybody's reaction was today. Mm, gotcha. Well, anyways, for those of you who don't know, John Stewart, the former host of The Daily Show, was on the cool bear report um I, I didn't even really know what, what it was about i just saw the clip and i kind of was just like huh very interesting well so to kind of set this the the scene in two ways with this uh this is the first he went on the the cool bear's new network show which has just turned in the most into the most absolute propaganda pandering bs show that in existence and really does a shame to what Colbert used to do Oh yeah, barely uh, shilling for pharmaceuticals. Yep, uh, it's just absolute garbage. But <laughs> it's the, it's the first episode back, um, and it gotcha. like yeah, everybody's vaccinated, all that kind of stuff, and and John Stewart comes in, and he makes he says something that is he's like you know it's it's a good joke, uh, but he's like you know. We need to thank the science, you know, science and scientists that have gotten us through and done the research on for the the pandemic because it's most likely them that caused it. Most and then proceeds to go on just the, yeah, just proceeds to go on the most epically hilarious tirade, like about how it's absolutely stupid to not think that the you know be, like we can get into the science and all of the other shit, but. He goes, it's, it's stupid to not think that in Wuhan, a lab, uh, you know, a virus broke out that just so happens to be the same type of virus they study at a lab in Wuhan. You know, mm-hmm. like, huh, geez. And like he, he ends it with, oh, oh no, uh, in Hershey, Pennsylvania, a case of chocolate goodness broken out. Is it because the steam shovel made it with a cocoa bean? Or maybe it's because the fucking her- the chocolate factory is there. But he, but he just goes on this absolutely <clears throat> epic rant, and Colbert the whole time is just doing the, this whole like trying to stop him from saying something logical, because <laughs> of course the con- Colbert is one of those like controlled media people. Where when Trump came out and said, "Yeah, I know we've had to- our America's top virologists and the CDC look at the thing and uh, look at the virus, and it doesn't look like it could have been man-made. It most likely." We think that it could have been leaked out from the lab there. Uh, but because he said that way back when, all of the media had to come out and be like, oh, this has been debunked by using a report that came from the Chinese Communist Party basically saying, uh, no, uh, uh, we didn't do it. It's okay. So because everybody right, it was knew wrong it was by default really- just because Trump said it and everybody had to run with it and prove it wrong. Otherwise, it would make Trump look right instead of racist. And they needed Trump to look racist. And they needed America to be fucking scared. So they gaslit the shit out of us like an abusive fucking boyfriend and traumatized the entire fucking country to be scared of going outside because they're evil fucking dickheads. Yes. Oh, I mean, it, and just inherently, like, the me- media itself, our media has turned into establishment propaganda. But the, the the bad thing is is who's the who which establishment for us or for the Chicoms and after everything with COVID, uh, it's turned into the Chicoms because their entire thing began defending China because all of a sudden if you criticize China, uh, you're racist against all Asian Americans, and it's like no no we're we we don't like the CCP. 
because they're lying sacks of shit currently committing genocide. Like, how, how do you not understand that? That's racist. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, I guess. But I the, believe you're saying all Chinese people commit genocide, and I will not call <laughs> that kind of bigotry on this show. Uh, yeah, you know what? I'm, I'm sure you also believe that an apartheid is happening in Israel right now. I don't know what that big word means, but I heard those Jews are great. <laughs> but no, no, but it all it all comes back to the to the just this one. John Stewart was fucking hilarious, but two, Absolutely. it's really it's really funny to see because so John Stewart is like everybody's liberal hero because he was a you know uh, everybody grew up watching him on TV and a lot of people you know, respected him because he would crap on everybody and he had a liberal bias, but then he comes on the show and shits on the the basically liberal media establishment for being stupid. And then you saw all of the left all over Twitter saying, ah, he's he's racist and he used to be my hero and he's not anymore and all this stuff. And it's just like, really? That's what did it? The... You don't like him because he said something that disagreed with you? It's like once they start sacrificing Jon Stewart to the fucking sacrificial cancel gods. Like, oh, yeah, that's kind of the final straw. That was that was the last hope of one guy that could have pulled you out of the fucking dark spiral into socialism. But no, let's just go there anyway because Jon Stewart is obviously a racist now. Well, it's just like how uh, I saw this little news story earlier uh, that we there was a, a de- North Korean defector that came to America and started yeah. going to one of the college and did it, like quit because she's like, wow, even North Korea isn't this nuts with the, the Marxist indoctrination. I feel like that's a little far because, you know, they kill people there. Is... Uh, yeah, but we're talking about the indoctrination in school. Not necessarily like the actual the, brainwashing. Yeah, the brainwashing, not the not the you know actions taken. But I mean, I, it, well, not we, a good we're sign. the same kind of we're the we say like they're actually killing people. But I mean, we do things like have two different arms of our executive branch pay and you know fund and equip terrorists that end up fighting each other in Syria. So <laughs> sounds like you're I sympathetic mean, of Vladimir Putin. Oh, uh, dude, the, the, the guy rides bears for fun. You know what I'm saying? You know, just, I can't be crush Monday, right you guys there. in San Francisco do that too, though. So, yeah, oh. they ride humans. Um, I'm I'm talking about real grizzlies. Oh yeah. Uh, have you ever seen the the pictures of Vladimir Putin on the back of a black bear riding it into battle? Yeah, it's bear cavalry. That was accurate. He was fending That's, off Hitler in World War Two. So uh, along with uh, Tom John Stewart, did uh, did Bill basically kind of do something so similar with it? Uh, but in terms of like school, he said, "Yeah." So there was uh, there was a bit, and uh, we should we should get into the cultural implications of this stuff, I guess. The point where we're Bill talking. Maurer did a bit, and you can just tell that he's he's becoming less and less um, accepted on the left. But he, because he did this thing where he talked about how college has become a scam because, um, you know, the fact that like the average student for these grandized dumb degrees only studies four hours a week, four or five hours a week, and he asked the question like, how is it liberal to force you know blue collar, low wage workers to pay for the education of? you know, people that go to college and make more to, more than them, like, mm-hmm. especially with, like, you know, the, the paying off debt or free school, and his point ends up being is, like, why, in, let, instead of making, uh, dumbing down college and making it free, why don't we just work on making it not a prerequisite or requirement for a lot of these jobs that don't actually need a degree to do? There are a bunch of jobs that, you know, they, they go, we need you to have a degree, any degree, you know, it doesn't matter, and you can come work, so that's why how guys with underwater basket weaving degrees go get a job because, you know, the boomers in our society grew up with the idea that getting a degree meant something because it did. 
So then they pushed it on Gen X and us, where it's like, if you get a degree, any degree, it doesn't matter, that qualifies you to have to have some kind of job that's going to make more. When in reality, our outside of STEM and maybe business, you know, college is a joke now. <laughs> it's just a complete and utter waste of time and a joke. Absolutely. And that's why the, I didn't know. It was like a lot of debt for something that's not valuable. Like, yeah, I do not and, want to compete yeah. in the job market with the other guys with a ton of debt who have to take low paying jobs because of college. Like, that's a shitty fucking deal. And I was well, right. I mean, I. Uh, I, I got they into, this, we're gonna try to get me to pay for other people who went to college and i'm like no fuck you i made a financial yeah. decision to not go to college and now you're trying to fuck me over it Bullshit. well i mean here even even look at this so like if you look at ec- just economics 101 and it, it's supply and demand right and i kind of got uh, in one of my college classes the ec- econ class you had these people uh, and this one person in particular that basically was we're saying you know and i forgot what we were talking about but it's like oh yeah the government should make college free because it's proven that you know if you have a college degree you make more money so if everybody has a college degree everyone's going to make more money I love how like, everybody you're fucking, says you're that, like it's you're... the first time everybody's heard that argument like everybody's been yeah, saying like... that like three times a week for 12 years and everybody still fucking repeats it like it's a new fucking well, point i mean but even then, I'm like, this is an econ class. We've already studied supply and demand. If you think about it, if if there's an overabundance of supply for people with college degrees, one of two things is going to happen. Only enough people to meet the demand for jobs with college degrees is going to is going to ha- is is going to be met, right? Only hiring up, leaving a large surplus of people with that, or you're going to then have, since you have that surplus, these people are going to take less wages. Or if I'm a smart business person and I realize I can hire three people for what it costs to do two, I'm going to lower everyone's wages and hire that extra worker. So no, just because the person has a college degree does not mean that they're going to make more money. And that's one of the problems that we're coming into is the, is the supply side of people with a, just having a degree is so excessive and there's no demand for it that these people get these massive freaking loans and then have their job isn't there. But at the same time, we also have this massive lack of people with STEM degrees and we're over here giving out more performative and visual arts degrees than the entire STEM field put together. It's like the degree you get matters, but and, but people choose to get this shitty degree versus the hard degree because, oh, that's right, math sucks. Who wants to go take more math? Uh, because they've been told their whole lives that they, they don't have to get the hard degree. They just need to go and do four extra years of school because that's all that matters when it's like, no, it matters that you go get the STEM degree. It matters that you get the hard degree because there's a low supply of them, so the demand is fucking high, and they're going to make more money. Exactly. But that that base supply and demand idea, people seem to just constantly fucking forget because supply and demand is why inflation happens. Supply and demand is why mass immigration lowers wages. Supply and demand, you can literally almost put to any societal fucking reason, and it shows you, you know, ninety percent of the problem. It's just basically we've known that. Is before. there effectively a difference between? a regular like low level college degree a pyramid scheme I, like if you're talking like a, a bachelor of arts in general studies or right, it's basically a pyramid and, scheme with extra steps i mean i wouldn't even i, I would have, have you ever heard the term uh, embedded growth obligation yeah that's basically what it is the it's depending on its own growth continually and selling its value to future children and stealing their future labor. It definitely it's a is. Thing where you it, take it's, out a loan and go into debt. It's well, I mean, it, it, it is, and people also like to reference these countries like, they like okay, let's say Denmark or Norway, for example. Um... But because they, those those places have, uh, for, like they they have state funded schools, right? But 
they also have a situation in their country where you can't just move there. There's no border for you to just hop. Uh, and if you're there and like, you can't come and get a job in that country without jumping through excessive hoops. And they're not in the EU. They don't have free migration. They're in the EU economic zone, but that's it. So you have these, and they talk about the success of that. And I'm like, well, you also have to realize that, they're one, they're heavily taxed. And two, uh, Norway and Denmark and places like that have this little thing called oil that they have invested their entire economies off of to supply it because if texas had 10 million people was its own country and then nationalized the oil their their oil to pay for social programs yeah they, they wouldn't have money problems and that's effectively what like norway um has in places like that have done and why they can do things like free college because guess what you're gonna have you also they also have the social stigma of i'm not just gonna go and get the cheesy ass fucking degree because of it so people may make those arguments all the time. It's like, yeah, but we're in America where our borders are fucking porous and we in every fucking, you know, every decade we have more, le you know, legal immigrants than the entire population of Norway combined. Mm -hmm. Man. But yeah, the, the free college thing and a lot of these things, it's like, Sure, it's cool to to think that you know people will get more educated and whatnot. But if the supply of jobs is not there, then the demand for the people with these jobs is is not going to be there either. It's also so a fucking lie because there's only a certain number of people who can give a quality education. You can't just throw sardines in a can and expect them to learn just because there's a person in the front of a room called a professor. It's not going to work. You need a system Even then, but they, they very dumbed down college by adding in stupid classes. Insanely yeah. large number of people. Right. But they've yeah. also, that's why college used to be hard, because if you had to go and actually take a hard class mm -hmm. and you had to listen to a, a, a lecture and then figure it out yourself, which is what a lot of things is. I mean, like I do online school for computer science. I don't have mm -hmm. lectures. I have to read a book and watch things on YouTube and figure out how to do the coding stuff myself. Right. That's difficult. Yeah. Like, but I tell you what, all of my humanities classes, I was able to fucking basically read, write an essay on this without having done any of the prerequisite work in reading that they say you need to do. Get right. an A on the essay that I just shat out. Uh, like, with 10 seconds of fucking Googling. Right. So, and, and it's says credit, I'm going to an accredited university. All of their programs are accredited and their classes are accredited. So this is the same kind of shit that people have to do in college. Like when they go and they physically attend. So it's like participation yeah, it's like trophies have made their way up to higher education. Yeah, uh, I mean, almost. Yeah, basically. But that's also because back when we made we made it so you know we basically nationalized the student loan industry, and you can get federal student loans, and the federal you know, and which caused tuition rates to fucking skyrocket. Quality of education didn't go up. In fact, it went down. And a lot of things because then you also had to dumb down school so that you could keep getting people that probably shouldn't be in college to begin with to stay in college so that schools can get more money from that's guaranteed by the government. Like, that's the only reason that even right now the government might have an option to pay things off is because people got federal loans and a lot of these, you know, banks uh, for the most part have gotten out of the student loan business because of, because of that. There's a lot of big banks that have. There's still still some, you know, smaller banks that still do it, but a lot of the big ones go, no, fuck it. And you can just go get um, you know, these institutions that do federal loans. And, you know, basically back they they passed this shit in Obamacare. Mm -hmm. and, to, and to quote Nancy Pelosi, you know, we'll know what's in it when we when we pass it. Well, that's one of the things that they passed in it. But then at I'm the same time. Yeah, like, oh, yeah, that's a great way to run a country. But, you know, that that's and that's one of the steadily since then we've seen the decline of of the quality of college, the necessity of college and the but the rise of these people getting under just absolutely burdensome debt. But I mean, at the same time, like if you're an idiot that thinks going to school and getting two hundred and forty thousand dollars in debt 
on a stupid degree is really going to make you that much money and you haven't done the research to figure out you know, like a quick google search what can i do with said degree what's the salary of these jobs and go oh that doesn't fucking equate and then change your plan i mean I, it, you kind of fucking deserve it but then we we sit in the situation where now you fucked over so many people that they're going to want to vote for a socialist economy because they got fucked into something because they're idiots that's going to fuck over the rest of us who didn't make the same stupid decision. Huh. Did I'll tell you, you a funny story. That, sorry, did you guys know that student loan backed securities are a thing? Uh, uh, securities in general are, are just a thing, so it doesn't surprise me. Yeah, but I mean... Remember the housing crisis because it was um, basically shitty loans collapsed because people couldn't pay them back. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and then they made a bunch of like stupid mm -hmm. guarantees, and you then you had banks, right. now fractional we have, reserve banking, and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, now we have last I heard one point seven trillion dollars in student loan debt. Do you think it'd be a bad idea to uh, short some of those securities? Because I feel like that big short movie was trying to prove a point, and we should probably fucking listen to it. Um, I mean, I'm just waiting for this whole housing crisis to collapse that we're having right now. So you can buy? Well, I mean, yeah, well, once I fucking leave. But one of the, the whole, like, these big mega companies, so I, one of the things from 2008 that people realized, that big companies and big business realized, is they could buy a bunch of houses, yep. and then on the cheap and then um you know rent them out to people like when i was in uh albuquerque i didn't rent from like a uh like a local institution i rented from a nationwide company that owns houses everywhere and now you're seeing all these companies that are out there like the black rock thing which has connections to china of course everything does right. that is buying up houses for way over asking price because what i think is going to end up happening is there it's going to cause a massive housing market collapse and then the government is going to come in and buy it from them for the price that they bought it from taking in all the losses that actually are going to that needed Absolutely. Uh, and then the government is going to go we own a bunch of houses and now we're going to use our you know equity schemes and we're going to try and we're going to sell them off at low low prices to having the tax fucking burden that was made up by these losses be taken on by everybody but we're gonna do this to give it to you know insert today's victim group the legal yep. immigrants the you know the african americans the whatever and then so they're gonna these companies probably have some insider knowledge on that so they're buying all this shit up causing another housing crisis causing a bubble to pop causing all this shit to happen to then only you know, then to have the plan to the the government gonna come in and and save them by you know by buying it from them for then the government could then turn around and use it as their wealth re redistribution bullshit scheme. But instead of redistributing distribution of the wealth from the freaking Uber businesses and the billionaires, it's just redistributing wealth that was from the people. It's taking it from the middle class. It always is. Robert always Peter to pay Paul. Always upward wealth distribution. Every single time they try to say it's something to help the poor people. Every time. Rich get richer. And they still try <laughs> to pretend that we're the fucking assholes for not wanting to fund this shit. What's hilarious is that, like, the Democrats are the absolute worst at it. But then they sit there and they put enough language on it so that people that, you know, that are in the cult of Democrats don't actually realize what's going on. And they think that they're doing something good, where at least when the Republicans do something, we're like, hey, the economy runs better if the rich aren't taxed as heavy because they can invest more and they can start more businesses because that only makes sense. Because guess what? There, there's more millionaires running their own personal small business that, that would be benefited from these tax breaks, that they're really not that rich. Their company is just worth a million dollars. You know, they're still pulling in average income. Their company's just making good money. Then there are fucking billionaires like Jeff Bezos. But when these people have more money to run their businesses, the economy works better. So get fucked. Like, or like, hey, social programs just lead to excessive spending, which leads to inflation and higher taxes, which stagnate the economy and wages. 
Uh, so yeah, we're not going to pay for you to have a cell phone because it doesn't really work. Uh, get fucked. Like that's much more honest of a conversation than, Hey, we're going to lie to you and tell you that what we're doing is, is for the good of the people when really all we're doing is lining the pockets of our corporate backers. Yeah. And I really don't think Republicans are any better than the Democrats on that one. Like, it's almost like professional wrestling. I, where I, they have I don't the heel, but they're all in on it together. But instead of hitting each other with chairs, they're starting wars. I mean, I guess, like, I trust me, like, I'm, I'm not the biggest fan of most Democrats, uh, or I mean, most Republicans in general. I like a couple of them, like I like Ted Cruz, um, but uh, it's it's the the face of people that go like, look, here's the deal. This is honestly what's going on, or the people that are, you know lying through their teeth and when they do something they're gonna lie about it and throw extra bullshit in at the same time to make it just worse you know like it's it's kind of like the lesser of two evils where at least like the evil that i prefer is the one that's showing its face it's like okay well you're doing something that will benefit your corporate backer but you're kind of like yeah hey if we benefit the corporate people they're going to be able to spend more money to boost the economy where the other people are like no, we're benefiting the poor, but it, the money, the same amount of money is going to get transited through 16 different ways in the government in order for the government to then pay, you know, you know, it's like we, if, the, if the end goal of a Republican is to get their corporate corporate backer a million dollars, they're going to pull it from the economy. They're going to just going to let their corporate backer pull it from the economy. If the end goal of a Democrat is to give their corporate backer a million dollars, what they're going to do is tax it, print the money, and collect it and worsen everybody's lives so that they can then have the government give their corporate backer their million dollars, which oh, then really was you know two to ten million dollars for that one million dollar. Where it's like it's like okay, well if you guys are both giving money to your corporate backers and that's all you're about, let me do the one that's you know a tenth of the hit to the to everything. But I think the Republicans are just there to lose. They're there to take the votes of people like us who think that they're helping the economy when really they're just there to not make too big of a stink while they lose every single big fight that matters. I mean, you also have to remember that other than uh, that, like, Republicans were winning the fight until Obama, right? We had 12 straight, we had Reagan, and we had 12 straight years of Republican presidents. Right. Then we had um, Clinton, which in reality, Clinton's strategy was to be a lightweight Republican with some, you know, Democrat stuff. And he did the same thing. And then you had W for so for 12 years and then eight years of of Republican light. And then with the bullshit thrown in is that bullshit thrown in. That was what ruined uh, that made Clinton bad. And then you had eight years of Republican, but then you had Obama, and and then we had Trump. So, like, there's a good stretch. It's just been in during our lifetime that we've seen this thing where, like, you know, re- where we've had a Republican win twice, and, and once was when we were kids, through the Electoral College and not the popular vote. But for a long time, we were doing well, and then the indoctrination really started to hit. I mean, the indoctrination started in the 60s, got worse throughout the 80s, and now we're starting to see the final effects. But yeah, it, but you know, in the system for decades, social media was like putting gas on a was like putting gas on a fucking bonfire yeah. because yeah. it it made it so that all of the weirdos from across the country had an easy way of of sinking up their stupidity. Let people like us have podcasts, fucking fools. Right. Well, I mean, it also made it so that it's the old, the squeakiest wheel gets the grease, and it made it so that anybody and their mother could go, oh, there's two people mad on Twitter. It's an outrage. We have to stop this. This intensifies the negative aspects of people, you know. It's just fascinating. Well, are we talking about... I... <laughs> Sorry, keep going. Now, weren't we supposed to be talking about comedy? Oh yeah, and the cultural role that I that it plays. I mean, yeah, and I mean, I I think that's why you started to see every you know culturally on the left and in media and comedy and stuff when when John Stewart left the mainstream and he retired, shit just went downhill. And then they created cookie cutter molds 
of him, but it was all TDS. And then Bill mm-hmm. Maher, Maher, whatever, he's behind a paywall, so his influence is very limited. You know, because not everybody has HBO. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, and the, these guys aren't people that are on YouTube and trying to spread themselves like, you know, <laughs> Steven Crowder or Jimmy Dore or something like that, or Tim Pool. So they, they don't have, you know, their cultural influence. One, Bill Mars slowly was ebbing away because he's on HBO behind a paywall. And then Jon Stewart's just no longer there anymore. I don't think people realize how scary of a sign it is when um, it starts becoming culturally popular to try to silence comedians. Because, you know, for the last 60, 70 years, comedians have always been getting silenced but it was always by the puritanical Christian right. Time after time, yes. there's people like George yes. Carlin pissing off the Christians. And that is a healthy, functioning society. Once you have your high-powered intellectual class trying to silence the comedians, that is a f- extremely different social sign. That basically means we're fucked. A very scary I, So I, and this is one of the reasons why, like, I constantly talk about wanting to go to Texas and the South and stuff like that, because while I don't necessarily agree agree with a lot of uh, of Republican stuff on the economy, I'm much more of like an anti, you know, I'm not a free trade absolutist and stuff like that. Um, I don't see many places outside of the Republican ran states that still hold on to some semblance of logic, right? Uh, <laughs> and and even some swing states. Like how would how does Ohio make more sense than California when California's got all the tech jobs? Right? Like and one of the things that I really think it is is struggle, right? Like in a lot of these states, people, there are still some things that people have to struggle for. Uh, in California, I mean, what the fuck out here is there to struggle for? Everybody lives in some of the most beautiful countryside where the weather is amazing. And the only thing that sucks is that housing is expensive, but we can cram ourselves into tiny apartments, not have kids, just have sex with Tinder and, you know, get our freaking dopamine addiction by smoking weed. As I'm smoking right. weed, I feel personally attacked. <laughs> well, fuck you. God, I mean, care. I look like a Californian living in Texas. I feel like people stare at me and they're like, that's one of them Californians. They can tell from the hair. Yeah, you just, just need to put to a lion sticker on the back of your car and drive around. They just walk up yeah. to you and they're like, who are you voting for? Yeah, but then I'll just like, I'll talk them down skill <laughs> it's a uh, a big yeah. sticker on the back of my truck when i move out there after being in california uh and going don't you know basically being like uh some semblance of i'm not one of those californians <laughs> this it's is just out of principle I californian won't. parents made me californian but god made me texan that'll do it yeah <laughs> uh well i like it's it's such a meme, but it's so true. You have all of these people that leave places like California, Washington, New York, because it's shit. We literally have cities here in California where you have to have a poop patrol to clean up human waste off of the fucking ground, where you have people in broad daylight walking into stores just dumping shit into trash bags and walking out, and nothing will be done, and the police won't even do anything. And then they leave here because this place is trash, and then they get to this place where it's like, yeah, this place is better. Let me vote the same way I did before. Let's fuck it up. It's like, what kind of stupid do you have to be to go like, oh, you know, it's like a it's like a slow kick to the nuts. It's like, oh, this pattern of behavior fucked up the last place I was at, but if I continue it, I'm not going to see anything for a long time, and by then, I can just move again, because fuck it. It's like California was okay until the 90s hit, and now 30 years later, it's absolute fucking dog shit. You know, even California voted for Reagan. 
So, like, that's, that's how about. recent... What's that? That's just crazy to think about. <laughs> yeah, and now you think that it's it's just absolutely not that, but then you, you like... You, I mean, all of us went like went to school here. Some of us still live here. You see these people around here that are just idiots, and they don't listen to anything or want to talk and reason about anything, and they don't actually pay attention. And like, if you said you were pro Trump because you you don't like immigration, the um because of what it does to wages, they call you a racist. But then they'd also say then have the same, you know, talk about, oh, our American wages haven't gone up, but the, the rich have. But if you but you can't say, yeah, that's not from greedy, greediness. That's because the, the we changed immigration laws in the late 60s, and they really came into effect in the early 70s. And there's a direct correlation between when mass immigration started in the early 70s and when wage stagnation started to happen to us, barely keeping up with inflation until now. <laughs> And you're not allowed to say that for some stupid reason. So even though these guys have a, have the same problem, they don't want to acknowledge the what's causing the problem. They would rather treat the symptom than disease. And that, the reason that's the whole problem, know, in my opinion, with modern Democrats. They know that their system depends on cheap labor. So they need people crossing the border to work for cheap. Well, Otherwise, I mean, that, I mean if you, if you, that, that's why Republicans never really cared about it. Because it's like, oh yeah, if we get a bunch of uh, of cheap labor, it'll make it so that companies can have higher profit margins and make the stock market better. So the middle and upper classes are going to be better off because middle class people have four hundred one ks. The lower class people now don't care. You know, they're they're now competing for their shitty low wage with people that are willing to take other shitty low wages. So there's more competition, and it's just driving the American economy. But it's like no like like supply and demand of labor is going to cause everybody to fucking stagnate and and that's well, why like the, the the super our immigration policy is a God. yeah we're we are very much um we're very supply side we're we are very supply heavy instead of being very demand heavy right because you need to go out and consume and consume and consume right that's what i was gonna say it's it's addicted to consumption and debt and that makes our system rely on a never-ending increase in cheap labor coming across the border well it's more i wouldn't say it was built on that dependent on growth and it can grow forever it's mathematically impossible Right, um, but I mean, it's, it's also one of those things. On printing more money. dollars to keep it funded, it's like, dude, that will not work forever. I Stop mean, it will, lying. It's, 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 ex- it's exactly why both the far left and the far right love, like, basically unlimited immigration. It's because you get cheap labor, but then at the end of the day, that cheap labor is going to come back and bite you in the ass, and it's going to make them go to the far left because you would now have a large swath of your population that lives like fucking serfs. When you say far right, there's you mean nothing else that you can right. describe it. Then you will have a... yes, like the the free trade fucking right. not uber libertarian far absolutes. right because most people when they use the term far right, I think they're they're meaning uh, socially far right, which is you know basically they want all countries to have one color skin. Put it plainly. Uh, that, but even then, like every instance where that has been the social far right, or people have accused that of being far right, has been done by socialist regimes. Right. Okay, you look at you look at the Soviets. They were a communist socialist regime that was trying to make everybody Russian. Mm-hmm. You look at the Nazis, the not the National Socialist Party. It was these people that realized that the key to having socialist systems work together were. Right. You needed unity so that they did that. Fascism in Italy was that, and the entire ideology on that was built by people that said, We want socialism, but we want socialism a new kind built on, built for being for the dominant culture group. Or you even right now, you look at these social democracies like Denmark and Sweden and 
Norway and stuff like that. These are also very left-wing governments economically that while they're not outwardly talking about it and talking about the supreme race of Aryans or, or battalions or whatever, they are still very far right in the aspect because they heavily control immigration into their country. And then also when you come to their country, if you don't speak the language, you're not allowed to stay. Right. So everybody, we, we live in this world where the word far, like they've attached all this far right to like this, to racism and stuff like that, because America has a convenient history of, uh, for them to do it. But in reality, every instance historically of stuff like that happening like outside of America stems from all of these far lefty governments. Well, I mean, we just have the bad history of uh, slavery and racism and segregation. It's always economic left, social right. Uh, but even then, you can't even say uh, you can't even really say that that's social right. It's socially authoritarian. Uh, because there really is no right or left, like there's there's Marxist and not Marxist with the like the social authoritarian. Marx racist. What's Marx that? Racist. Well, Marx, Marx was definitely a racist. Favored. Well, yeah, but even then, the the terms right and left are really about how much government intervention do you want in the economy and how much government intervention do you want in people's lives so if you right. when you really break it down and think about it if you want the government to control the the demographics to that key that that's still when you break it down is a far is is far left because you want the government controlling all of that it feels like you're making that's, an argument that's saying that it's actually right and then you're just swapping out the word right for left at the end well, no, because you have to think the furthest government end of the right spectrum based on race does not make it left. It's right. But that That's doesn't make it control. right either. Well, okay, what's the? But here, but then again, the furthest you just said the right, right on, wing is government on, control. No, I said left wing is government control. So you said authoritarian what, right is social control. Uh, so no, authoritarian and libertarian are the top and bottom. And then you have left and right. So the whole political compass is left and right is the government intervention in the economy. And then so top to bottom is... left and right. You're just using social top and bottom. Yeah, so it's, it's like there's authoritarian and then liberal... Bottom like, being what I was calling like, left. Like, social top being what I was calling right. Yes. So is racial control authoritarian... That's authoritarian. Is it libertarian? Right. Yeah, it's authoritarian. I was calling right. Because you have authoritarian you're, versus you're libertarian. Yeah, right. authoritarian so why are is you... Okay, I think we're just arguing semantics at this point. It's stupid. Move on. Probably. But the, the bigger point is, is that because academics have, you know, the academics in our national institutions and stuff like that have for the longest time been dominated by um left-wing individuals even though they know when you actually study like socialism fascism and all this stuff they they you know that fascism was a left-wing thing they all call it far right when it's absolutely not because they it's still built around socialism but what we what we all have i you know for good reason is a bad taste in our mouth from the nazis over you know what they did socially so the left, because, yeah, the left, we, the left in America for decades, for a century now, has been dominated, has dominated our academic institutions. They created the language to say that the Nazis were far right, or at least socially far right, in order to mm -hmm. distance themselves and their socialism and their ideal systems away from the Nazis, because we all hate the fucking Nazis for good reason. Fair enough. Right, because when you, because... Like, this goes into, like, some real deep dive history, but there were legit Soviet plants that got sent over to America to infest in our government, our media, and our, and our universities. Absolutely. Now, Soviet Union has fallen, but that didn't mean that the building blocks that these people left, left over doesn't still exist. And the, the indoctrination that they did to other people doesn't still exist. 
right? Or we that there are still so active up. plants. It's not, yeah, it's not like there's still active plants being controlled by the KGB. It's it's dominoes no. falling over. It's the no, ripples no, in the water. There's still active plants being controlled by China. Well, Nothing sure, they they will have taken that the over. The name of the government controlling the plants. It's never changed. Sure, I mean, and, but then at the same time, like you have to remember that we had proof when the Soviet files were declassified that they had people during World War II so high up in our government that they were intercepting secret transmissions between Roosevelt and Churchill. Right. So, yeah, the act are the language down to our very language, we've been we it's been forced to seem like everything that says right or far right or whatever is the bad Nazi. Because yeah. you can have the like even then you have this you I have this debate frequently with people where they try and say, "Well, fascism is on the right." It's like, "No, fascism is socialism." with a different name yeah. on it. When you read the actual source material about fascism, that is literally what it says. Originally from Gramsci, right? Uh, it's originally from Italy, right? So, Gramsci. Mussolini. Well, so Mussolini no, I think was a student was of a guy, I'm forgetting the dude's name. Um, I always do, because it's one of those complicated Italian names. I bet uh, you if you look it up, it's Gramsci. Fascismo. But uh, no, I don't know. Googling. No, it's uh, Giovanni Gentile. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah, I know that one too. Which one was so first? his it quotes from him literally say that fascism is 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 ba- is they wanted to perfect socialism because one of the things that they realize is that unless you had the social driver to keep people functioning and to keep people willing to make self-sacrifices, that socialism would always fail because you lose, if, if you have a hundred people f- pulling a cart and you, you know, a cart with 10 people, well, if you slowly start to lose people pulling the cart because they all want to get in the cart, then eventually that cart's going to stop. But if you have the social pressure, pressure and cohesion, to keep people pulling the cart because they're that's what they're driven to do then they can continue the socialist program so especially if they create these socialist programs for said dominant culture so like the ethnic italians or the ethnic germans because even then the nazis weren't quote unquote fascists they were national socialists there was just some crossover right because but they had similar ideas Right, they but they didn't call themselves fascists, right? Oh, that was that was Italy, but they had the same right. idea that if we create a social state where and then and we create this uh, ideal perfect you know thing and we control everybody's indoctrination and we control society, we can create this socialist economy for our benefit. But two of the things, the things that fascism and the national socialism had in common was that instead of destroying like big business, what you would do is make all business big business because they understood that biz- big business had efficiency to it. But those right. big businesses would then be controlled by the government in order to, you know, that's why they would could do workers' rights and that's why they could do all of these socialist programs because if you eliminate all of the competition for businesses, they don't give a shit about it anymore. That's why Walmart doesn't care when the minimum wage laws are raised because it puts all their competition out of business, right? It's, it, it carries over to things that you can think about today as an example. But all those are based off of socialism. But we've, we've, we've perverted our language and the academics and the way that we talk about it by, because people even still think that national socialism and fascist socialism were far right, and they're not. Dun, dun, dun. I'm educated on it. Fascism would be the that, perfect system if only yeah. we weren't human. I mean, communism would be the perfect system if we weren't human. Right. You know, it's it's really... But I mean, even then, like, look at these countries that people love to talk about today. Denmark, Sweden, and Norway with their social democracies, right? Do you want to know what they have that's very similar to what Mussolini and Hitler tried to create? Is it cultural homogeneity? Well, it's yes. Okay. 
guys still there? I can't hear anything. That they have, that people sit down, shut up, and work. It exists to this day. It, it all stems from the fact that before technology, Sweden, Norway, and Denmark sucked to live in because it was cold. Right? So people had to work together. People had yeah. to sit down, shut up, and work, or everyone would die. So they they have that. They still have it today. You can you can Google it up. J U N T law. Uh, I was I'm like like we came. My family came from Norway, so I was looking into it recently, and this is mm. something that I discovered. But it that's the social pressure that they have that you know from and their cultural homogeneity because they don't let anybody in that keeps these systems that required you to have the majority of people pulling the cart going. And in America, we don't have that because we're the land of the free and the home of the I'm going to get what's for me. And that's why we're America, honestly, is both the best and the fucking worst, because that's how we're innovative is because people want to fucking make money. But it's also why we're the worst, because you have people that fucking take advantage of all of our systems and expect things to just be given to them. That's why, that's why uh, uh, JFK and I have this quote on a Star Spangled Banner sitting in my office that says, ask not what your country can do for you, but ask what you can do for your country. We have fallen a long way from that, especially on the Democrat side. That's because at this point, if we were to ask what we can do for the country, they would say, sit down, shut the fuck up, stop causing problems. And when that's what my country is going to ask of me... It's time to say no to that country. Well, and that's one of the things that leads me to think that the balkanization of America is only decades away. Yeah. You can't have an expansive empire and it's, or you know, an expansive land power like America without some kind of social unity. And an empire on is, cocaine. Yeah, and, and some and as we to Rome. Right. And what we've seen is that especially with the advent of social media, any unity that we might have had around being America ha- is is getting completely destroyed. Yeah. It's it's similar to the colors revolution in the Soviet Union when all of the different nation states and all um, nationalities said, uh, fuck you, we want to be our own people. And then and then all the Stan countries popped up, right? In Azerbaijan and Georgia and right. all that kind of stuff. Well, there, there are some people that think that America is only, you know, is not far off of that happening in multiple different ways because we have three or four different culture groups all in America and we're losing the thing that binds us together. We had more that bound the USA and the CSA together culturally because they, ever, they, they both still loved the founding fathers and the union and all this stuff. They just fought over the evil of slavery, right? Um. But they still had more that bound them together, just one big thing that wedged them apart, right. than, than we do now. You have a break between Republicans and Democrats, and then you have a break between, you know, just entirely of, of just the base realities that we all live in. Because there there's the base reality Republicans understand and see what critical race theory is, because I don't know if you know this, you want to know where critical race theory came from? Hitler was one of the uh-huh. fucking things that Hitler used to use in order to convince the fucking Germans that they were better than the Jews and everybody else. It's the same manipulation of race. It's just now got different words in it where instead of being we're better, it's they're worse. It's the yeah. same, you know, bullshit. The fucking old KKK used to do it. It's an, it's an old school racial division trick. It's just it has a new target, right? Uh-huh. So we've got so much breakup in America that that people don't have any cultural unity anymore. Like, what the what the fuck does you know California have in common with? I don't, insert any other state that's not on the West Coast. Nothing. So, did we have any other topics to go over before we get to our controversial ones? Because that lends directly to my controversial stance. 
I think we'll have to get to the G7 and nuclear leak later because I kind of ranted our way into the sure. controversial sti- uh, statements. <laughs> yeah, it's no problem, right. guys. So, so I got I, I got to let you talk more, Kyle. All right, I think that uh, it's time to. Well, see- I think yeah. Texas should secede, nationalize the oil, probably join a federation with Florida. I don't know who the fuck else wants to come along on this party. Oh, I you'll probably it, get the good old boys club of fucking Alabama, Mississippi, Louisiana. Uh, maybe not Georgia 100%. this time. 100%. All those sister loving states, they're definitely coming along for the ride. Yeah, the, 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 the cousin fuckers. Yeah, and but oh, like, anyway, let's 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 actually introduce the segment as if we're doing a real sure, podcast. Sure, sure, sure. So, do you want me to do it, Wasabi, or do you want to do it? Yeah, you can go for it. Okay, so this was my brainchild. Uh, today, we're introducing the uh, segment that we call controversial statements, where each of us is going to pick a controversial statement and then reason as to why, and then the uh, the rest of us are going to play devil's advocate. So. Kyle, you just started us with your the basically the USA should break up into different substates because there's nothing binding us together, which does play right. Yeah, uh, it's it's, it's an idea being popularized, especially by Michael Malice. If you don't know who he is, look him up. He's fantastic. It's the peaceful breakup. Um, mm-hmm. Basically, I think it's only a matter of time before exactly what we were just talking about there is absolutely no reason to be in the same governmental system as a state like california and there is no benefit to states like texas that are focused on personal freedom to want to stick with states like california that are focused on the benefit of the hive it's only detrimental and I think if we don't eventually leave, Texas will become too weak to fight back if a superpower like China ever tries to invade. Because if we lose our guns, we lose everything. And gun rights have become such a hot topic issue lately. Um, I think that if we stay, we're risking losing that fight, and it's not worth that risk. So sooner rather than later, it's time to bounce. Well, wouldn't you still be losing most of your ability to defend yourself because you lose the populate, you know, that population dense and dense places like California and New York, and plus there the industrial heartlands of areas like that. I'm completely confident in Texas, Texas's ability to survive independently. Yeah, God did make you a Texan, didn't they? We okay. Here's the thing: we will lose technology. We will lose a lot of comforts. You see, but there's one thing that we will not lose, and that's food. You have food, we don't have any other problems. You guys have few... So this is really hard for me to play devil's advocate for, because I've always said that there's at least two countries that can make it on their own. One is California because of food and oil, and the other right. is Texas because of food and oil. Huh. Right? It's Imagine super that. hard to embargo a state that can produce all of the necessities for modern life. Right. You know what I mean? So it's very hard for me to play devil's advocate on this because like I I've been talking about the the coming balkanization of America for years and years um now cuz I've just seen it happen. I've seen the you see the same thing happening. But yeah, no, I I I think the reason why it will fail is because you guys have had too many Californians move to Texas. Yeah, but that's kind of a big sign that we don't want to be with California. Because they're coming in and changing your politics and your culture. Well, I don't know how much the politics and culture are changing, how fast. You know, I've only been here for a few months, and shit, I'm totally the kind of person who's going to get involved in shit like changing culture, so I can't speak too much about how bad it is that Californians are coming here and making changes as long as they're not changing it directly back to how California was. Well, but well you also live near Austin, you know, which is one of the direct re- representative representations of why California, absolutely. Californians coming to Texas is bad because that area just sucks. 
Uh, I think that's why I, it's important for people like us to speak up and be like, hey, wake up, pay the fuck attention. We know what we're talking about. We saw this in California. We understand where Texas is going, and we need it to stop. Otherwise, there's nowhere else to go. There's nowhere well, else it's going to fucking take. Once it becomes a swing state, that's that's when it's that's too late. That's what I mean. We need to prevent that from happening. Well, definitely. I mean, Florida being almost assuredly solid red now is also a good sign. But, you know, Florida with Freedom Land and fucking DeSantis. But no, I, I, yeah. I, I don't even think that you would lose that much in the form of technology and comforts because look at people like Elon Musk. They're moving to Austin. They're moving to Texas. Yeah. Yeah. The I- industry is moving away from California. Yeah. Oh, um, another thing we have here is water. California doesn't have water. You know where California oh, gets you guys have. You guys have some water. You guys have the Rio Grande, I'll give you that. But No, 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 no. Dude, you don't know Austin if you don't think there's water here. My shoes are always muddy because it's always wet, even during the summer. There's a shitload of water here. Greenery everywhere. The Colorado River runs directly through Austin. I mean, I want to move up to Dallas because there's a shit ton of lakes around there. Yeah, it's a little drier up there than it is here, but it's too bad. See, I wouldn't go to West Texas, though, because that's like I would live there as a kid, Um, and that is literally just damn near high desert farmland. Austin is is butthole. Austin is beautiful and green. The Colorado, oh, yeah. River, yeah. Colorado River feeds California. All we need to do is set up a dam, and California dries out and dies. Well, that's also because California has the most idiotic... Well, okay, never mind. This is not about how Cal- sucks California is. All right, Wasabi, please save it and have some devil's advocate position about why Kyle and, I guess, me, I, are wrong on this. Uh, on... Um... Texas. <laughs> okay. On yeah, basically the South will rise again, and and the the country breaking up into oh. its different component parts. No, it's not the South rising again. It's America rising again. Yeah, I yeah. <laughs> the revolutionary America. It's you know because California. Well, I mean, assholes have done to my country. It's different, and it's time to change it back. And if California is not coming along, we're going to walk away from California, and we will be New America, and they can fuck off. Could you imagine the country without California? I mean, let's just say, imagine the country without the West Coast. Oh, yeah. Talking. I mean, it's just filled with... Like, as somebody who has grown up in both Washington and California and has been stationed in both Washington and California, I can say that, like, the liberals I've met in other parts of the country are an entirely different breed than the idiots that you find here. (laughs) Like, I've lived in Albuquerque. I've lived in upstate New York. I've lived in Charleston. I've lived fucking everywhere in this goddamn country. And you just, it's a different breed of idiots on the West Coast. And all these yeah. people like to leave the West Coast and invade everybody anywhere else and infect it. It's like why Colorado used to be red until all the Californians moved to Colorado. Oh, man. Sorry, Colorado. Didn't mean to do that. No, the, uh, it's just a shame, really. All right. Now, anyway, Wasabi, you got something? You got, you know, a counter, counter statement? Uh, nothing much. I'm I'm kind of in, in agreement with Kyle on a lot of this. I'm kind of just waiting for California to kind of fall out so I can have an excuse to, to move somewhere. <laughs> the only thing that is going to suck if California collapses, people here are so brainwashed that they won't realize that it's because of the people that they keep voting in. They'll like, blame you know, the right like I, Well, no, like I know Democrats here that absolutely hate the Democrats. But then they'll keep voting for Democrats. It's like right. it's like oh, the they hate him, Gavin Newsom. They hated the guy before him. They hated the guy before him. And it's like, and all the same things keep happening. It's like okay, well, if that guy sucks and all the Democrats you've had suck, why don't why don't you stop voting Democrat? Well, because the other guy, you know, it's just it's like because people here are so brainwashed into well, the Republicans are racist. It's like yeah, you're global. 
yeah, it's it's brainwashing. And so I don't even think this place could like it literally is burning down around us right now. And nobody here takes a second to stop and think maybe it's the other way around. I don't think it's gonna happen until the Republicans get a black guy as president either. Is it how how effective is it calling somebody not white uh, a racist? Like so I like Ted Cruz or Tim Scott needs to be the next guy that wins the nomination just to cut that in the fucking um, the matter, they still lie about different, different shit. Who cares what they're lying about? Yeah. I'm ready for her uh, show. Yeah. But all right. Wasabi, do you have a uh, do you have a controversial statement you're willing to defend today? <laughs> I, w- I wouldn't call it controversial, but I would probably say that I think if we're going to have a military draft that I think females should probably be a part of that. Ooh. That's probably about it. Okay. God, man, we are we we need some dis, dis, differing opinions here. I'll disagree. Um, well, all right. Well, what about if there's a draft, right? And a draft actually happens and a whole bunch of women die and our ability to reproduce goes away. Isn't that bad? Well, how much though? I mean, there's more women than there are men technically. You're making this <laughs> And I, I mean, was going on a rant. I was going on a rant with somebody about this earlier. God damn it. I mean, oh. I, I can disagree on that one pretty strong. Why is that? Because I think the military should be effective. Oof. Uh, yeah, but what about all the paperwork jobs? If you fill out, if you... If if the the you know the admin jobs and the behind the front line jobs are taken up by women, then that frees up all of the men that could be fighting bodies to go to the front. And I think administrative jobs should be filled by people who are going to do the position the best. And since the government can just print fund money and they can basically pay whatever the fuck they need to for those positions, they can pay whatever they need to, regardless of the gender of the person doing that job. But at the we same don't need time, a draft for people to come in and sign for work. We need a draft for people to stand there and take bullets. Right. And I don't want women in the front line. But at the same time, you can do a draft. Ridiculous concept. And as a part of the draft, bring, bring people in, have them do the ASVAB. And if they score really well on the ASVAB, regardless of if they're men or women, that's going to show that they have the potential to do a job really well. So you could do that and then be like, okay, well... These this these, these you know women are you know their score really well can go and do this, but then that still does free up one dude who might have gone to do it from doing. Okay, sure, we that. can have a lady draft too. It'll be super cute. We can put Hello Hello Kitty stickers on everything. It'll be fucking adorable. But we can also have a real draft for the guys that have to get shot at. So, man. Yeah, but at, at the, the same, same time, time, time I, guess, you, I guess the only thing I would probably say is just like, you know, I mean, I've met a couple of female Marines who are actually pretty kick ass. One of them actually works. I don't doubt it. There's a lot of women in this country that could kick the shit out of me. And if they want to join the military, fucking I salute them. Badass women. Yeah, I'm not they saying are, front lines. I'm they are exceptions to the rule. In, I know, but I'm, I'm not. I mean, let, let me specify then. I mean, just because you're part of the military doesn't mean you're actually going to be fighting on the front lines. Yeah, but I mean, I've been in the military men. for nine years, and I just go on submarines. I mean, my my point ultimately was that if you should be a part of the entire military, just working a function of the military. And, <laughs> I mean, I had one co-worker, yeah. Grace, who was a part of the military. Yeah, Kyle, I, I think you underestimate just how many menial task bitch jobs there actually are in the military. I don't think it's that. I just don't understand why we would need a draft to fill those positions. We need a draft because people are not going to be willing to go over and get shot at in an extremely dangerous well, war, regardless well, of what they're getting because, paid. But it, if well, they're only on, hold on. The, death, they're going to be more than willing to take those jobs because why it's wouldn't because they? Of, well, because one, when you join something like the Marines or the Army, you're, you don't get to determine where you go. If the only thing that's open is getting shot at the only thing you're going to go do is get shot at right but two for let's let's say and these numbers are hypothetical but let's say for every 100 people that you have getting shot at you need 100 150 people or more to do all the admin behind it 
So if I take my military now and I'm going to be need a million more people to go get shot at and I have to draft them in, well, then I'm also going to need to rapidly draft in another 1.5 million people to take care of all the logistics for those 1 million people getting shot at. Because you're not in a time of war when a draft is going on going to be able to adequately bring in and recruit enough people to fill those other positions. So if you were to say we're going to have a male and female draft where primarily all of the males, unless they're extremely well suited to go do a different job, those are going to go be the bullet sponges. You still then have like menial jobs that are very important because of what they do for the logistical chain of getting people food and bullets and water and all of that other kind of stuff or taking care of the vehicles that you can then also draft people in. So now if we're in a massive scale war, it's only fair that if you draft men and women that you can then draft men into the position of, you know, primarily in the position of that, but you're still needing to draft other people. But then also if, if we're drafting people, it's because we're in another world war scenario that then still frees up that extra. So let's say out of that 1.5 million, um, people that we drafted in for the logistics positions, let's say 7.5 of them, you know, let's say half of those, so 750 million were women and not men. So now there's still an additional 750 million men that are in the draft pool that we can then bring up later without sacrificing our logistical capabilities uh, by just taking them straight over. It frees, if it keeps them in the draft pool to then go be used as bullet sponges while the, without affecting our ability to get them to go be bullet sponges. You know what, I, I get what I'm that. saying? That's fairly simple, but still, let's not draft women into frontline combat. Period. End we're not talking about drafting women into frontline, frontline combat. combat but yeah, I know. No, we're finish. not talking about drafting women. I just let you rant. Combat. Let me finish. Okay. Yeah, 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 let me use the bathroom real quick. You guys keep talking. I'll be right back. If we um, need more go tasks, if we need more menial tasks, and literally for some reason, there is some mathematical reason that I don't understand, we're not capable of drafting enough men to fill those positions. Like, there's literally not men that exist, and we need to draft women to fill those positions. And okay, then we can draft women to fill those positions. The only thing is, that's literally never going to happen. Well, I mean, at the same time, do you change your oil before your car breaks or after your car breaks? I mean, usually after. So, if you, okay, well, when are you supposed to change your oil? Yeah, get what you're saying. Right. Change the oil it's just preventative then... measures that you could take to ensure the long-term success of your ability to draft guys in to go and, and you know, shoot people. Yeah, I think it's a better idea to leave women at home... You know, just like in World War II, they actually joined the workforce, so they were supporting the work effort without having to be drafted. Yeah, but now we're already in a position where women are supporting the work effort to begin with. Okay, then who's going to go into the factories? Children? What factories? This is America. The only factories we have produce guns. Okay, people work currently. They would not be working (laughs) if they get drafted. Who fills those positions? Children. I don't know, people on welfare? They okay, draft them then. Uh, and well, now we're talking about, you know, population cleansing. Like, look, okay, your argument for why we should draft women was really, really simple. Numbers. I get it. And we should treat people fairly because of gender. I get it. I draw the line at war. Period. That's where I not treat women the same as men. We keep women out of war. I understand, oh yeah, it's a good idea, we can make the military stronger, blah, blah, blah. Simple. I disagree, keep women out of war. If they I mean, if women didn't join, have the right to vote, I would definitely agree with you, but since women join, have the right to vote, they have just as much of of a of skin in the game as, as guys. So, drafting both men and women to fight the problem is a much different scenario than when... I understand the rationale of the argument. If women want to join... I can. I still disagree with drafting women. You're gonna love. You're gonna love my statement next. Yeah. I'm just gonna wait till J- till Wasabi gets back. Yeah, for sure. No, I mean I definitely see where you're coming from, but I definitely think that's the emotional argument versus the logical argument. 
It is, and that's okay, because always using the logical argument is not always the best idea. I mean, sure, but then there's also a reason why states like Israel and Switzerland have the most high-functioning societies, and they, you know, force yes, men and women of the into size military of their population, They are required to have women serve. I understand that in Israel's case. Right, we but it also it also creates that women serve, then maybe. But that's not going to happen. Israel I is mean, tiny. Okay. We have you're not million people and the largest navy fucking ever. Let's or not get China. into the navy because we don't because because technically China has more ships, but it's a lot of fishing. We have air dominance, on so I don't really care about their ship count. Oh man, I could I could go on rants about and as a as a sailor about why the navy the next time there's a real naval fight is in for getting its ass kicked at least for the first year or more. Oh, oh yeah. Um, we'll have to do that one when we're not recording. Yeah. 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 I get you. Uh, yeah. Um. Uh, it's not it's not being classified, but I don't want to record myself talking yeah. about things while I'm still in. Yeah, it's not a good idea. Yeah, I already uh I have conversations about it a lot at work. So it's and to me it's funny because a lot of the problems that I've had with the Navy while being in the Navy are just exemplified by it and are what I think is gonna come down to the to the issue. I mean, there is the whole part of the critical race theory infecting the military and making it basically gay. So you know, no, it's got it's got nothing to do. It's it's um, uh, it's it's, it's a very organizational structure, uh, problem. All right, I'm back. Yeah. All right. All uh, right. so are you guys still talking about it? No, we're talking. We kind yeah. of moved on to something else that I gotta I gotta talk with Kyle about after we stop recording. Okay. Uh, okay, my my stance is that a lot of the things that we are experiencing now uh, comes from the 19th Amendment. Women's right to vote? Yes. And it's not just because of women voting. It's, it's because of the enacting of uh, universal suffrage is extremely counter to the idea of democracy and a republic to begin with. Because the whole idea of a democracy and letting people choose was that the people that are choosing all have some level of skin in the game. Now, whether this is, you know, it started off as like land, people have landed in wealth because they, it's, their, it's their wealth that's controlling the economy that could suffer when things come in. But then it worked down to, okay, we're going to have it be males, which people misconstrue in a couple different ways because socially, you know, you and your wife would get together and then go vote and your vote was supposed to count not as just your vote, but as your family's vote. Right. But when you include universal suffrage, you have people that will vote without having any skin in the game. Right. It's people that, you know, and I, I bring up women because one of the things that, why that was logic and reason behind democracy is that men were were if there's a war could get drafted to go fight and die so they really want to know who's uh you know have be able to have a say in electing the people that might send them to die but they can also get rounded up to be bucket brigades and to fight fires and to go be put into a posse to go catch criminals and bandits so it's, it's people that could take a bullet or could get burned and die are the ones by by the if you know ba based on the result of what the leadership that gets voted into are the ones that get to determine who the leadership is and we now we live in a society where every single person over the age of 18 is allowed to go and decide it even if they have no reasoning uh, or knowledge of what's going on you can get people that don't even follow politics that just go in and vote mail-in voting right you get women who don't have, for the most part, you know, you have mothers and you have wives and you have stuff like that that have the same, you know, semblance. But that's why you see there's a whole lot of married women that end up being Republicans because of this kind of thing. 
because they understand because they do have children and, and they have skin in the game that way. But you have these people that will go out and they it's and determine things when it's they're not the ones that are going to be affected. So it's it's in my opinion that suffrage in a democracy in a republic or a democratic republic, whatever you want to call us, should be limited to people that um, either have served the country or are serving the country, either through military service or being doing something like police service, being a firefighter, going and working for uh, the government, you know, working and serving the country in a different way. Or people that directly still pay income taxes, or taxes of some, you know, income taxes of some level. What about because people who then if they're the government, if you're paying taxes on that business, sure. Right. I mean, like instead so of it, just income taxes, because that means anybody who works. Oh, I think anybody who actually produces capital. Well, but let's also think about it. Ahead. You have somebody like me who. In the end, because of child tax credits, I don't end up paying any taxes, any income taxes, right? So I'm paying, you know, I pay taxes every month, but I get it all back. So there are plenty of people that are like that where they end up at the end of the year, their income is so low that they don't pay any taxes. Okay. You know, so it should be that people and you you can make the tax bracket different so that people of lower income aren't forced to pay taxes, but they can choose to in order to get the eligibility to go vote. Or you can have people like me that can like when they file their taxes, say, nope, I want to pay my taxes and don't get any and don't get everything returned so I can keep my eligibility, even though, you know, whatever. I mean, a bunch of different caveats because the military and stuff. Right. But the the right to suffrage so voting should be limited to people that in some way directly have contributed or are contributing to the country and not just to everybody that hits a certain age so i how to state the main goal would be make it impossible to take from others through the ballot box uh, effectively, and that if people, if we want to vote in a system that is, you know, uh, social programs and things like that, it's because we have the government or a politician has convinced you of the necessity of it. And then they've also, you know, if they want to keep it after convincing you of the necessity of it, they then need to implement it correctly or it will get removed by, by, the next people that are voted out because the taxes suck and they're not getting anything for it. What about different levels of voting ability? Like everybody can vote on like small town issues and then you have to maybe have a job to vote on say state issues or and you have to own land or a business to vote on federal issues, something along those lines. I mean, I could definitely see for certain measures as to passing a law um, that doesn't regard financial issues or, you know, war and things like that to being like, okay, hey, everybody, we want to vote on what our town mascot name is. You know, let's, <laughs> yeah. let's do that. Sure, but still the base level of voting franchise should come down to, you know, what's your contribution to society? Because a homeless guy doesn't get to walk off the street and go determine what's on the menu at a restaurant. Sure. And at the end of the day, everybody has their own, like, the, the point of a democracy is not just that we get to choose our leadership, but it's also still based on the the idea that, society, like, while society owes us certain things, you know, um, like life, liberty, property, things like that, we also owe society things to continue making it happen. And one of those things is effectively our investment into society so if you don't are doing anything that has invested you know you know time blood sweat tears and money into the functioning of society then you shouldn't get to determine the role of society uh the route that it takes i I agree i agree too are we controversial people i guess we just all agree
A lot of really dishonest, power-hungry people would say that we are extremely controversial. I mean, you can attack me on my logic all you want, but it ends up being fairly sound. If somebody doesn't have skin in the game, what do they really care about how the game is played? I mean, they're just going to call it's you how right, you but, when you create at this point. Well, right. But, but when you create enough poor people that they outnumber everybody else, then you can get all the poor people to vote for you and put you in power based off the promise right. that you're going to take money from people that aren't poor and give it to them. That's why it's power-hungry people who would say that we're controversial. Yeah. Because <laughs> our ideas result in the disillusion of centralized power. But it's also one of those things where I don't personally think that anybody has an excuse for being poor in America. Fair enough. Oh, I I just well, I don't. Except if you don't, severe mental issues. Yeah, like if you live in like you can blame you can say whatever thing you want, but we're in a place where there's public education, and even though we don't like it, people are easily able to go and get higher education. Right, no matter what they do, they can go and find, try and further themselves. They just have to make rational decisions in order to do it to get themselves out of a shitty situation. So there's no excuse uh, outside of bad decision making about why somebody stays poor in America. It's like why it's, it's you know the basis of how we all hate we everybody like hates the fact that there's homeless, but ninety some odd percent of people that are homeless are homeless because they're drug addicts. And not because they're economically homeless. Like, being poor in America, while I wouldn't go as far as to say it's a choice, it gets very close to it because there, everybody has the opportunity to go get some kind of secondary skill to enhance their value and move up in the world. You know... Well you do have to know that it is harder for some people, and I'm not trying to make the fucking leftist racial argument, but... Um, I don't think that white privilege is actually a thing, but there is a privilege in basically growing up with parents that stayed together and never abused me. Like that granted, was granted. Most people. Granted, I'll give don't you that. that uh, no, I'd say most people still do, and you see no. you a lot. But statistically, most people do not have that life. What you have is an abundance of people that have been brainwashed into thinking something, into believing that something that's not true. Like, I'll give you an example under, I don't know what the numbers are, but during Trump years, there was a trade deficit of 5 million or more people in the trades. So now, if you're an intelligent person, you would go, okay, I'm going to go and go to trade school because you can get a loan to go to trade school and go get into the trades because that's there's a need there and that's going to make me more money. And it doesn't matter where you come from. All you have to be able to do is to make the rational decision to see that, go get extra an extra skill and go make yourself more valuable. <laughs> because Going no, back to what you said about everyone being brainwashed, though. Uh, yes, yeah. people are absolutely being brainwashed. Uh, you know that like being traumatized makes it really easy to brainwash people, right? I I grew up in several traumatizing different situations. Yes. Okay, but that besides your personal experience, I mean, just generally speaking, if somebody has been abused or traumatized, it's a lot, lot easier to brainwash them. Sure, which we is why to... doing things like with COVID where you traumatize everybody through constant fear indoctrination. Exactly, makes... exactly. Right. but we also uh, have a system that basically perpetuates you know, fatherless homes, for instance. So we have an insanely high number of people who grow up with step-parents who are statistically significantly way more likely to abuse both mentally and physically children in the household than a blood relative would be. So it's like this government system actually purposely ends in people getting traumatized so that they actually are victims when they try to indoctrinate them into this you are a victim system. Yeah, well how else do you people think Democrats lying when they say that they're Democrats? Right. That's how Democrats reproduce. Right. 
for abuse. But, but at the end of the day, even if you take somebody that has gone through all these issues and they still have the ability, they just need to make the choice, they still have the ability to go and do something like, I'm going to go to trade school to get a trade job to go, make, to go get into a union to make money. The, 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 the ability for them to make the decision is lacking on their part, but the opportunity is not lacking in the society. Right. Yes. People are affected by their upbringing. People are affected by trauma. People are affected by everything. But it's just like the tr the traumatized alcoholic that decides to finally put down the beer and right. get their life together. There's nothing stopping that person from putting down the beer other than their own decision. So while you can live in, in your squalor, squalid, poor shit life, there's nothing actually stopping anybody other than themselves from right. making the decision to do something to better their life. Huh. Are there impediments? Are there things that get in the way? Yes. Is it easy? Not always. Does it require self-sacrifice, perseverance, and like moving, moving yourself forward? Yes. That's why it's a decision you have to make to do for yourself. And a lot of people don't make that because reasons. You know, you can insert any number of reasons, but yeah. there's no re there is no actual impediment for somebody to get out of the poverty uh, out of being in the working poverty class. Be a rebel, yeah. start a family. So I think we birthed a brainchild tonight, and that is the potential governmental system of the free state of Texas. <laughs> I mean, they've been trying to secede for a long time, bro. Yeah. Damn liberals. Damn liberals. I think right, well, I mean, people also have to, have to remember. Uh, no, I think we're good. I was just going to say the South was, quote unquote, liberal for a long time because the democrats have always called themselves the liberals and the the south for up until like the 90s was still voting democrat because of yeah. unions and liberal economic policies and stuff like that probably i would actually i probably are they were voting democrat pretty much all the way up until like the 2000s i uh, i think the last like so Bill Clinton got Louisiana and Arkansas, and then after that, it was, you know, the Southern strategy that happened in the 60s, I guess, finally came to fruition 40 years later. Oh, mm -hmm. uh, the lies of The Southern tell. strategies. I don't know, just the more you look at history and the more you look at things, the more it really changes your perception on things. And most of, like, most um, of the problems that are happening... Really, not because of Democrats. Yep. Like, I mean, you, you, you have to remember, like, the Democrats have had Congress from like 1960 all the way up until like 19 what 94 for the most part. Yeah, and a lot and of instances. Really the time, like both houses, like it's insane. I mean, the whole reason why Nixon had the EPA and a whole bunch of policies was because of you know he had a majority of Democrats in Congress, so they couldn't really do much. Yeah, I mean, when you look at, um, well, I mean, everything itself repeats in history if you pay attention enough. Like, I honestly think one of the things that we're seeing right now is a direct replica of the Protestant Reformation, where you had all of Europe get into a schism because half the people said, no, we want to believe the propaganda of the Catholic Church. And the other half said, no, we want to read the Bible and think for ourselves. Which is basically what it was. Like before the Protestant Reformation, you could, they wouldn't print the Bible in anything but Latin, and nobody read Latin. So even if you were a German or an English or a, somebody from France or Pole, whatever, you didn't have a Bible in your language. So, but all the Catholics were perfectly fine with that of being indoctrinated and led along because that's what the Catholic Church had turned into by then. And then you had this great upheaval in, you know, hundreds of years of wars between the Protestants and the Catholics. Because you had a group of people that said, no, I want to believe, I just want to believe what I'm told, which today's Democrats. And then you had the, 
the, the Protestants who said, no, I want to make my own decisions and do my own research, which, while not all of today's Democrats, that I mean, today's Republicans, you have a lot of dudes like us who decide to go and do their own research and make their own decisions. Yeah, I think you're absolutely right. I've actually <laughs> thought about that before, how similar this time is to the Protestant Reformation. I've even thought of YouTube as the modern printing press. Like, despite the fact that the company itself is fucking cancer, the tool and how it can be used to spread information, the kind of information that we rely on to be able to do podcasts like this, is fucking incredible. I guess and you could say have, the internet it, then it, is the it, modern it, printing press. Sure, yeah, that's definitely more fair. Um, but the reason I specify YouTube is the difference between uh, spoken word communication and written communication and and how you can actually fully communicate through video compared to just textual-based conversations. I guess let's just say modern, um, like the original YouTube was, because now it's it's fucking state propaganda but right. no i mean that that that's that's where i think we are you know yeah. just culturally and it's a it's a repetition of history because we have two separate people and this is occurring basically all across the west as you're you're getting these people are waking up and realizing that half of their population doesn't want to actually you know see what's really going on they they're perfectly fine with with watching the modern priests on TV in their news stations tell them what's real and and not want to look into it themselves. All right, who's the modern Martin Luther? Ugh. <laughs> um, I don't want to say Trump, but no. Trump was one of the 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 in watching Trump get elected and then watching all the media that happened around Trump really just showed the massive corruption of media complexes, the least in America, and right. really split people down the lines of, do I believe the news or do I not believe the news? Jacob, who do you think is Martin Luther? I don't know. Is it Jordan Peterson? Mm, I was going to say Crowder, actually. I think Peterson <laughs> might be more accurate. I think they're almost like two sides the coin of exposing the emperor has no clothes. Is it Joe Rogan? The highly intellectual and the other being the comedian here in Crowder. So you have <laughs> Rogan, not so much because he's Rogan's not as like the guy that went on a trip to China and came back as in, and is talking about a bunch of voodoo he saw over there. Uh, he plays a role in it, but he's not holding the torch like um, Peterson and Crowder do. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> Excuse me. I mean, <laughs> I see what you're saying. Uh, I wouldn't say I necessarily disagree. I just think that uh, the I would say, you know, Crowder, Peterson, and then Trump create three sides of a coin instead of two, where yeah, you have Trinity. the comedy, the cultural side, and intellectual side. But then you have the lightning rod that was Trump to kind of prove everybody right. Or his hammer. Yeah. So because we, a lot of people wouldn't have been exposed to just how, you know, there's always the, oh, oh yeah, Fox News is conservative and CNN and MSNBC are liberal. But it, it really came out just how corrupt and bad the corporate media institutions really are in regards to Trump. Yeah, that is true, so, guys. That's all I got, right, though. Man. Anything else for you guys? I think that's a good spot to end it. Yeah, it's probably good. I'm tired. Late, and then I gotta be at the hospital early in the morning. Yeah, I gotta be. Yeah. I gotta wake up at five to go to work. Have fun with that. <laughs> Off tomorrow. Oh. Fat bong gets tomorrow. I mean, it's usually. <laughs> All right, signing off. This is Wasabi. Later, guys. Later. Later.